Oh. Is this the M4? Ah, uh, no. This is the I4. What's an I4? For, for seeing, you idiot. I thought it was funny. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the first BMW EV sports sedan. And it's called the BMW i4. Unlike the iX SUV that's now available, the i4 isn't built on a bespoke chassis. It's on a shared platform with the 4 Series, and the 7 Series, and an X5, and an X7, and so on. So somewhere along the line, they've saved money, which is great because, apparently, this time, so have we. With a starting price of $73,000 Canadian, this is some of the closest pricing we've seen to a petrol counterpart. But that shared platform thing could also point to some compromises being made. And yet, this M50 has been heralded by many as a full M car EV, despite the fact that it's only an M performance model. And to be fair, despite being close in price to a normal M440i, it does have more power than a full fat M3 competition and more torque. But the i4 M50 weighs over a thousand pounds more than the M3 comp. So how can the i4's reputation as an EVM possibly be founded? Let's find out. If you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and hit the bell. Yeah, it's, it's heavy, but a normal M440i Grand Coupe is well into the 4,000 pound range, so this was never gonna be light. And it hustles. Five hundred and eighty six pound feet of torque, five hundred and thirty six horsepower, dual motor, all wheel drive. It puts down the power. That is almost M3 competition acceleration. But instead of the belch of an inline six, we have the soundtrack from Inception. Because the sound options in this car were designed in collaboration with the one and only Hans Zimmer. And if that name is new to you, he's just a guy who's done the music for a few small movies like Gladiator, Pirates of the Caribbean, Cool Runnings, Pearl Harbor, Dune, Interstellar, The Lion King. Yeah, okay, all right, yeah, Hans is prolific. But I think that's a really cool collaboration. And I think it sounds really cool. It doesn't make me feel like I'm swinging around the Black Pearl or hanging from the ceiling inside of someone else's dream within a dream. But I'm feeling the rhythm, I'm feeling the rhyme. That was a cool running joke, don't at me. But as we learned with the drift analyzer in the M3 and M4, when the Germans try to have fun, don't criticize them. They might never do it again. It's like telling a toddler to stop smiling. I don't want them to stop. Speaking of stopping, as this is an EV, we have the option in this car of one pedal driving. So I switched this into B, and now I can drive the car singularly with the accelerator pedal. So the top portion of it is braking. For more intense braking, you can use the brake pedal, and it is still quite a natural feel. But for ease of use, and speak to any Tesla owner, almost any Tesla owner, and they will use one pedal driving. That is good, and I'm, this is the bit where I say, I've actually really got used to it. Um, and I am used to the concept of one pedal driving, but it's not as smooth in this as something like the Rivian R1T we just test drove. You know that blue truck that we had that's now gone up $20,000 without much warning? You still use the brake pedal for more intense braking, and the brake pedal itself does feel very natural. The accelerator pedal though, and one thing we've credited a lot of other EVs for 
is their throttle response, the, the way that they've calibrated the accelerator so that even if us as stupid monkeys in shoes aren't that smooth with it, they've smoothened out, is that a word? The, the process of acceleration. If it weren't for the fact that there's a slight delay on the pedal, not, it's not even that slight to be honest, like here. It's fine, you can drive around it, but having to drive around something by its own nature is not a perfect thing. But if you just want to drive this like a normal car, stick it in drive, you don't want the funky Hans Zimmer sound, you stick it in comfort, then the i4 M50, along with its quite lovely ride, not e-tron GT level, which is the car we said this car would dethrone, becomes a competent, easy to use around town, smooth, highway cruising executive vehicle. And if this was an Audi, then I would say that it's pretty much succeeded in its goal. But BMW, unfortunately for them, are victims of their very own marketing. Because for all the things that Audi and Mercedes do better, BMW's role is to be the ultimate driving machine. This one even has M badges on it. But listen, I'll let BMW say it, okay? These are their words. This is from the press release. The BMW i4 packages the agility and dynamic authority underpinning the brand's fabled sense of driving pleasure. It is the brand's first electric vehicle focused squarely on driving dynamics. Okay, I want to dispel the notion that this is an EV M3. It just, it just isn't. I've been hearing people say that. It's actually insulting to everyone who's worked on an M3 or owned an M3. This is nowhere near that. But it is a BMW sedan with a little M badge on it. Oh, I say N little M badge. There's like nine M badges on it. And so it must have that injection of BMW DNA. All right, so this has a multi-link suspension set up in the rear and the regular struts in the front. And it is an EV, so there's a motor in the front and the motor in the back, but they've biased it the same way that they would a normal BMW sedan. That is, it's rear wheel drive biased and the front motor kicks in when necessary. In fact, you can get a rear wheel drive only version of this car if you get the 40. So for me, I need to be able to turn off the traction control, which I can do by pushing that and then pushing this, and kind of have fun with it. Listen, I know it's a big EV, it's meant for cruising in the highway and all that, but it's got M badges on it. It is a BMW. It needs to be a little bit exciting. So when I chuck it around a corner, it... Yeah, no, see? It doesn't have a limited subdifferential in the rear or in the front, so it just kind of peels one wheel and it doesn't... It doesn't send the power around in an intuitive way for me. And you can really feel the mass when you start chucking this thing around corners. It doesn't feel like a four series to me. It doesn't feel like a three series. It doesn't feel like a little button down sports sedan. But I've driven Grand Coupes in the past and you know, they're obviously, they're not M3s, but they're still BMW-y. But for me, the biggest issue, and honestly, I can deal with the rest of this stuff. I just start to accept in my brain that an EV BMW is competent at going in a straight line, keeping you comfortable on the highway because the ride is great. The sound insulation from the road is top class. But the biggest issue that I have is the steering. Every BMW, I think, it's my opinion, I guess, should have engaging steering and engaging front end. It's just, just kind of numb. And it seems like BMW doesn't even seem to care about it anymore. Okay, you know what? Hold on. I'm going to pull over for a second here. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to read this to you. Now, <clears throat> this is from the press release. BMW says, The electromechanical steering system stands out for its excellent directional accuracy, good, and low sensitivity to the disruptive forces triggered by uneven road surfaces. So, like, you know, feedback. Now, compare that to... 2010, when they were talking about the BMW 335i, BMW steering is just as essential to the driving experience. All three series models come standard with a hydraulic power steering system whose road feel and precision are legendary. Well, apparently, they've given up on road feel. However, I do have to give them some credit because I don't know how much they even could have done. Because think about it this way, every 100 pounds you take off of the front end of a car, the less you have to assist the steering, which means that it doesn't need to be over boosted so it's not, you know, 50 pounds to turn the wheel. 
there's a lot of weight in this car, so maybe it has to be like this. Maybe they're still trying to figure it out. I hope that they are, because I want normal BMWs to be what they always were, which is ultimate driving machines. A Mustang Mach-E shouldn't have better steering and a more engaging chassis than a BMW, but it does. Okay, I was just, we were just kind of harsh to this car. Yeah. Um, I did, I, you know, it does a lot Yeah, of well, you got the easy part. You got the, ooh, Hans Zimmer, and like, <laughs> it's really quick in a straight line. The braking calibration is good. Throttle's weird though, right? Throttle is strange. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I think, like, okay, we were harsh to it, but it's cheaper. It's cheaper than a lot. And that's what we said. We, we, the consumer gets to experience the fact that it is just a bit of a slapdash conversion. Yes. And that's really mean. And then there's an engineer somewhere saying, I worked my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it isn't a dedicated car. And we were saying it's, it's one of the, it might be the first in North America, non-dedicated performance sedan, EV sedan. Yeah, like it's the first like big yeah. luxury quick sedan that's not a ground up EV. And there's some, 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 some symptoms of that. Skating. Uh, like, check out this front. Oh, yeah, the front. Oh, yeah. it's huge. Yeah. There isn't one. It does have a big M there, though. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of M's. <laughs> There's a lot of M's, yeah. <laughs> I count the M. Um, yeah. But, yeah, here it is in Portimao blue. It's uh, a great blue. Great blue. I really like this blue. Great blue. I do somewhat wish that uh, they'd converted a 3 Series instead of a 4 Grand Coupe. Um, I, mean, I mean, to be fair, the old Grand Coupes looked really poopy. This one doesn't look so bad profile-wise. It no. is a hatch, though. Like, go open the hatch yeah, yeah. and show the ladies and gentlemen that it is quite useful. Right? Yeah. It's good. Not bad, and that's powered and everything, right? But the, uh, wheels, yeah. the wheels look a lot like they're stolen from, what is it, a Toyota 8.6? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. But, but the wheels, these are the 19 inches. So the range on this car gets quite interesting. And I've actually, I didn't mention this in the car, I've actually had some range anxiety with this in the winter, yeah. as we would expect. Yeah. Uh, I drove here today, I think I drove about 45 kilometers. Yeah. And I watched the range drop 120 kilometers. Were you trying to drift on on-ramps? I literally doing? just highway driving in, in one pedal mode. And, and the yeah. Canada cold just crushed the range. It crushed the range. Um, that is depressing. But this, on its best day, I think the EPA rating is 435 kilometers. Which is pretty good. That's fine. Yeah. On, the, on the 19 inches. Right. If you get the 20 inch wheels, which are heavier with a wider tire, wider wheel, and wider yeah. stickier tires, yeah. then you go down to, I think, 365 kilometers. So, so, you, so you ruin the ride and the range. And the range. Because maybe you because will track. Because of cosmetics? But maybe you will, yeah, it must be cosmetics because you're not going to track just, a 5,000. No, no one's going to track this. That would be like getting a piercing, but piercing your own lips shut. <laughs> what? Right? It's like, it's weird. It's, it's completely, completely yeah. compromised what you're like, well, it looks really cool, but I can't <laughs> eat anything anymore. Sorry, I got an appointment. I got cancer really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think this car is more interesting when you get to the, uh, the 40, the four, not the I, sorry. Can't say I. It's not an M50 I because that means injection. It's just an M50. Yes. If you just get the 40, the range jumps up significantly, especially when you go for the 18 inch wheels, you get 484 kilometers. Yeah. But then it's rear wheel drive only. But does that one come with an M badge on the grill? Nope. Ah, no. see? There might be an M Sport package that gets you this on the side there. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, the other thing about it being a conversion, it doesn't, it doesn't like boast new gen level charging times. Like I think it's like 31 minutes from 10 to 80%, which is, it's fine. That's fine. But yeah. like an Ionic 5 EV6, they did it in like 18 minutes. Right, right. So, I, I have noticed that I think the grill is getting smaller. What do you mean? No, it's not. I was lying. It's exactly the same size. Do you want to go look at the interior? <laughs> sure. Okay. Okay. I'm surprised you didn't pick apart the wing mirrors. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're putting the M wing mirrors on everything now. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Frank's Red Hot. What was that? Oh, just all the different flavors. No, that, have you seen the commercials? I don't watch I put normal TV. It's an old, I put that on everything. You haven't seen that? Oh, um, yes, I have seen that. <laughs> of course you have. Yeah, Everyone's yeah. seen that. No, I'm actually starting to be glad that my M2 doesn't have M wing mirrors. All right, that's a unique way to look at it. Are you it, glad it your is, M2 doesn't have it is the, it is, the S54? S55, even? <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, this is uh, the new screen stuff, right? Yeah, so this is iDrive 8. I drive eight. So it, it apparently is slightly different in application to the, there's different things you can get versus the iX, which is also I drive eight. Right. 
But yeah, visually the biggest thing is we've lost the normal, like we've gone to two screen setup. Like it's kind of like homogenous, everyone's doing yeah, it. Yeah, I don't really like that. I don't, so I don't like the design, but I've been playing with this a little bit and I actually, this I like this better. I complained enough about BMW's new iDrive that yeah. this is simpler. It's just the same blocks of information that the old, old iDrive was. Right? It's easy to get on with. It's very easy to get on with. It's very easy. And how is Apple CarPlay been working? It's been great. Yeah? It's been great. I've got on with it absolutely fine. Like, it hasn't cut audio. We do say every time we get a BMW, it it seems to get better every time. They they are improving. They're working out the bugs. Unfortunately, the climate is now in a menu, right? Like, there's. Is there anything down here? It's touchscreen here. But to yeah. get to the heated seats, yeah, it's the menu. Yeah, Although you is... still have a heated steering wheel button on the, on the wheel, which is Yeah, good. thankfully. But yeah. The rest um, of this is the same as a regular 4 Series, though. It's all very regular 4 Series Grand Coupe, yeah. Um, yeah. The, you know, weirdly, so another symptom of it being a straight conversion, Yeah. which is not a deal breaker, it's just a bit strange, is there is a transmission tunnel that doesn't have a transmission in it. So, oh my god. So the middle seat's not very comfortable. I didn't even think about that. And then, That's where the drive shaft would be. Yeah, the sh- and then not related to the EV stuff is, the, is the rear seats. Yeah. And I've actually never sat, sat in a 4 Series Grand Coupe, so I don't know how this compares to the older ones. Right. They're not that spacious. I wonder if they had to raise the floor a little bit to fit the batteries underneath? Maybe. The, the awesome. legroom is fine for me, the headroom is fine, Just, but I don't expect it to be more. But our sound engineer and tall man tester, yeah. who's six foot six, <laughs> yes. really doesn't fit in this. Really, really doesn't fit. So, again, I just wish that they'd converted a three series. Maybe they will. Maybe they will. Maybe he wouldn't fan that either. He'll put batteries on the floor. Anyway, that's a kind of a big sunroof. I, uh, I like that. That's, that's nice. Otherwise, it's typical BMW in here. The materials are good. Well, it's blue, well built. There's blue things going on. Blue got things. Blue stitching. Oh, got yeah. Blue start stop button. Blue around here. Blue around here. Who they chose blue? for their like EV color. I feel like that's completely the normal color, like the lightning color. Is it? Every single brand is chosen. Why does no one use green? Green's a cool accent color. When I think green, I think like health bowl food. Like an acai bowl? No, Did I no, say no, that I right? Think, uh, I think it's acai. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it is. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, this is, listen, listen. I like this car as a, a daily EV thing. Right. Right? I don't, I'm hard on it because it is a BMW. If that was a different badge on the steering wheel, I'd have a slightly different conclusion, I think. I, I, I know, I, I agree, but I think, I think at some point, once you get to 5,000 pounds in weight, there isn't much different, and especially, and even with the range stuff. Yeah. Like, I, the range, if you're just commuting to work and back, it would be fine. For us, I think we feel the range a lot more is because we commute, then we film it all day. Yeah, we drive it really hard to film it, right? Yeah. And it's a thing. That's a thing. It's a, it's the sacrifice you make for that that smooth power delivery and we, whatever, right? But ah, whatever. Can we do a conclusion? Because like I, I think I got some thoughts. Okay. Okay. The first thought is that press releases are not gospel. The second is that the i4 M50 leaves a little bit on the table. It's good and well priced considering, but it's not perfect. Unfortunately, the things it does well exist in the more affordable and better ranged 40 trim, but even then, I'd still find myself leaning towards dedicated EVs like the Tesla Model 3 or the Polestar 2. The BMW just doesn't have them in the areas I hoped it would. Normally, when we jump in an EV, there's a next-gen feeling to it. It feels like a step forward. But I'm with Thomas on this one. The i4 does not improve on the 4 Series. And despite its M badge and 0 to 60 time, it doesn't feel like a sports car. Luckily for BMW, the similarly priced and far lighter M340i and M440i exist with the wonderful B58 engine, which until you hit the full M cars, still feel like the most enjoyable and purposeful way to enjoy this type of BMW. Thanks for watching.